hard scale low in a way similar to the 1925 tri-state tornado. Sting cloud moved on, it left behind believers and a silence only broken by the sounds of the wild. Flattened. The only gas station is in shambles. The pumps ripped from their foundation. The man driving this pickup truck was killed. Wesley Russian saw him die. The truck was coming down 501 going toward Lornburg, I guess. And the storm picked it up and threw it through a store building. Tornado hotspots. Most immediately think of Kansas and Oklahoma with Tornado Alley. Others think Alabama and Dixie Alley. Many don't think of the Carolinas when talking about tornadoes. Throughout history, South Carolina has had over 1,200 confirmed tornadoes, whereas its northern counterpart has over 1.5 thousand confirmed tornadoes, totaling about 2,800, which is quite a lot, and although it doesn't stack up to states like Oklahoma, it is still a high number. But the purpose of this video is not to discuss the numbers, but to look at a day in late March of 1984 a day that would produce seven F4 tornadoes across South and North Carolina, with a total of 24 tornadoes that would kill 52. In this video, we dive into the meteorological setup, the outbreak, and its aftermath. This is the story of March 28, 1984. Really quickly before we begin, only 9% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing as these videos take a long time to make. So if you could reward me, that would be great. Anyways, back to the video. 1984 had very few confirmed tornadoes in the first three months leading up to the aforementioned outbreak. However, on March 15, 1984, a small tornado outbreak would manifest and spawn two F4s in Arkansas, killing seven. Twelve days later, on the evening of the 27th of March, Upper Air Plots identified a broad and powerful upper level trough exiting the southern Rocky Mountains into the Great Plains. Winds in the upper reaches of the troposphere accelerated upwards of 140 knots across Texas and Mississippi. At the 500 millibar, winds over 110 knots were present over portions of Louisiana and Mississippi. As the trough marched eastward in Georgia and the Carolinas during the early hours of the 28th, bringing its 110 plus knot winds stretched over a large area. Temperatures in Georgia through the Carolinas were in the 80s, with accompanying dew points in the high 60s to low 70s, creating Cape values around 2,000 joules per kilogram. Seeing this, the forecasters at the National Weather Service Severe Local Storms Unit, which is today the Storm Prediction Center, issued a moderate risk from southwestern Georgia northeastward into southern Maryland. Later, the National Weather Service Severe Local Storms Unit upgraded areas to a high risk of severe weather, from eastern Alabama into the outer banks of North Carolina. Early in the day, supercells began firing in Georgia and moved east into South Carolina. The outbreak is now underway. The first tornado would touch down in Georgia and would down hundreds of trees. Thirty chicken houses, a manufactured home, a golf course, and more than a hundred buildings sustained minor roof damage. A child in the manufactured home sustained minor injuries. This tornado was rated F1. After an F0 in Georgia would cause no significant damage, an F1 would touch down in South Carolina. The tornado tracked to the northeast of Whale Shoals. It was embedded within a larger area of downburst winds that also moved across Anderson and Abeville counties. In total, more than 18 homes were damaged or destroyed, and 24 people were injured. Shortly after, a large and significant tornado destroyed 19 manufacturer homes and damaged 13 others. It also damaged or destroyed five community buildings, and there were over 500 acres of timber that had been cut down. A total of 43 people were injured. This tornado would be rated F2. Another large F2 tornado touched down in South Carolina and moved through the town of Newberry, which was reportedly resembling a war zone after the tornado struck. It damaged or destroyed 80 businesses, including a church that lost its roof and a wall, as well as the Dance Academy building that partially collapsed. A fatality occurred when an automotive shop was destroyed. An additional 38 people were injured. Shortly after, an F3 tornado began near New Hope and continued eastward into Fairfield County. The tornado in the previous one collectively destroyed 254 houses, 86 businesses, 68 farm buildings, 45 manufactured homes, and 7 large public buildings. This second tornado injured 10 people. 
The first major tornado touched down at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time in South Carolina as an F4 tornado moved east through the northern edge of Winsboro before crossing Interstate 77. Paralleling to the previous tornado along much of its path, a private school was severely damaged, where witnesses reported buses thrown into the air. A church and several masonry retail buildings collapsed as well. In total, the violent tornado damaged or destroyed 40 houses, 24 manufactured homes, 5 communities, and 4 businesses. It killed 6 people, 5 of which were in mobile homes, and 1 died from a heart attack, alongside 49 others being injured. 20 minutes later, another violent tornado damaged several buildings, caused extensive tree damage, and injured 5 people in Lancaster County. It crashed into Kershaw County, demolishing a manufactured home park and injuring 31 more people. This tornado would be rated F4. Shortly after, another F4 damaged or destroyed 36 farm buildings, 4 homes, 2 businesses, and large swaths of forest. It injured 24 people. A mere 10 minutes later, another F4 touched down in South Carolina and moved northeast into North Carolina. The tornado moved through the north side of Bennettsville before dissipating near Laurenburg. It killed three people in the rural community of Leicester and four others in Fletcher before crossing the state line. In total, 100 people were injured. At the same time, another F4 tornado touched down near Bennettsville. To the east, the tornado devastated the towns of Tatum and McColl. The tornado crossed the state line and struck towns of John and Maxton before obliterating Red Springs. The tornado was dissipated near Parkton after injuring 395 people. Several F2s and 3s would follow. One F3 would end up striking Beaver Dam, killing two and leveling a large swath of pine forest. The tornado also struck Salemburg, killing a person there before killing two others near Roseboro. Six people in total were killed in the Clinton area before the tornado had dissipated. The tornado would go on to kill 12 and injure 101 in total. Another F4 began near Clinton, North Carolina killing one person in central Sampson County. It continued into Duplin County, causing severe damage to Faison and Caldyspo. In Wayne County, another two people died. In Mount Olive, otherwise, 149 people were injured. The deadliest tornado of the outbreak touched down shortly after, where it would be responsible for 16 deaths and major damage in and around Snow Hill, Winterville, Aden, and Greenville. 153 people were also injured by this F4. Several F2s would touch down, accompanied by a handful of F3s, one of which killed six as the intense tornado moved near Lewiston, demolishing a manufactured home park. Five of the six deaths originated from the same family. Nineteen people were also injured. The last tornado of the outbreak would be an F2 that touched down as a water spout over the Albarelli Sound before moving on shore. The tr a tree was blown over, crushing a manufactured home, killing one person and injuring one other and the outbreak was now over, and people could see the devastation. The roads community of Johns is flattened. The only gas station is in shambles. The pumps ripped from their foundation. The man driving this pickup truck was killed. Wesley Russian saw him die. The truck was coming down 501, going toward Lornburg, I guess, and the storm picked it up and threw it through a store building. That John's firehouse crumbled. The trucks were spared. The owner of a convenience store watched the back wall yanked apart. A lone dog searched for her newborn puppies. During the outbreak, one storm produced on an estimated 250 mile track a family of 13 large tornadoes, 10 of which produced F3 or F4 damage, which was occasionally connected by swaths of downburst damage. The resulting tornado family the series of tornadoes in totality is among the longest on record. Twenty years later, in 2014, another small, less intense outbreak would manifest in the Carolinas, with an EF3 and several EF2s. To conclude, North and South Carolina are not recognized as tornado hotspots, and only big weather enthusiasts know about the Carolina Alley, as it is called. The outbreak itself was nothing special aside from its slightly untraditional location. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and I want to thank you guys for 490 subscribers at the time of writing this. Um, I have a Discord server that you can join, and I'm always active, and I post lots of updates about video, dates, times, and overall just behind-the-scenes stuff, alongside just general weather talk. 
If any of those interest you, then I suggest you join. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Goodbye.